Hey everybody, I'm Greg Soul, and I'm back with another Ansible Automation demo. So this one in particular is interesting for networking folks. And I assume you could extend it to uh, other things as well. But the idea here is I am doing uh, network backups to a Git repository, right? Nothing earth shattering there, but layer on some additional interesting pieces, right? So uh, for one, this demo is doing configuration as code, right? So I'm storing my configuration as like show run format, like it's going to look like regular Cisco CLI. Uh, and to be very specific, it is uh, in this format right here, right? Looks like a standard show run. Like it's the one you're going to be accustomed to seeing. That's actually the backup. Here is the configuration that I want to push to the device right here, right? So I've got all of my stuff in here. So I've got my name server and through the cool, uh, new functionality. Well, I mean, it's new it has been working towards it for a while. Uh, but inside of Ansible resource modules, now they have the ability to parse configuration. So that's what I do. I give it the full CLI and I say, Hey, for the, uh, DNS stuff, parse this configuration, pull out those pieces, NTP stuff, parse, pull out those configurations, right? Access list, whatever it happens to be. I'm storing everything in regular CI format. <clears throat> the thing I like about it is that uh, engineers are accustomed to seeing this. This is what we're used to, right? So I can more quickly get in here and make modifications, especially in ACLs, right? Access lists, if you break those down into a data model, it gets really hairy, really fast. So it's nice to be able to keep all this stuff in a format you're accustomed to. Also, when I'm backing up, I'm backing up in the exact same format, right? So it makes it really interchangeable um, whether I am pushing new configs like this or I'm restoring from a backup that looks just like this, right? So it's pretty much the same file format that you're going to be accustomed to. So having said that, I will do point in time backups with this, right? So just before my configurations happen, I'm actually telling it to do a backup, but I'm telling it to do a get tag, associating that with a, a tag, which really, if I look at my backup folder right here, let me pop just into my backups. I go into the tag section right here. It'll show me all those point in time releases. So it really takes a snapshot of your repository as it sits now, puts a tag on there. So if six months from now, I want to rebuild from the snapshot, say here, I can just put that in, tell my repo to clone based on the branch of that tag, and it'll pull exactly those configurations as they stand in there. So what's good for me is I'm going to do a backup of the tag, right? So I've got my point in time, then I'll do all my configuration changes. And I've been in environments where everything looks good, all the testing works fine, but then uh, six hours later, when it hits eight o'clock and everybody starts utilizing the infrastructure, something's wrong, something's extremely wrong, and we need to, we need to hit the emergency stop button. We need to roll back really fast. This now gives you a method to where you can just specify that point in time release on the affected host and say, get me out of here, right? Pull the ejection lever, clone that repo of just those configs, uh, use it just against those hosts using the exact same playbooks that I've already written to actually do the configuration changes. So I will try and break down some of the playbooks a little bit towards the end. Uh, that gets a little bit further in the weeds. And so some people aren't necessarily interested in seeing that, but for the sake of my <clears throat> demo here, this is the Ansible Automation platform. Uh, here in the template section, you can see job templates. These are basically referencing playbooks, right? So discrete pieces of automation. I say discrete because I break my playbooks generally into bite-sized pieces where they're gonna do individual things, right? So like this one you see here, it does access lists. This one does just DNS servers. This one does interfaces. This is done to NTP settings, right? And so I'm taking that one big config file and I'm just pulling out the pieces I need for each one of those things. And I do that specifically because uh, if I look at this workflow template where it takes all those little bite-sized pieces and it makes an interesting picture out of it, right? So I can now start taking these, each one of these squares represents a playbook. I can take all these little playbooks and I can start snapping them together and do an interesting way. So say tomorrow, I need to just do DNS updates. I can just use the DNS playbook, right? DNS job template. I don't have to have all this other stuff, right? Since there's not a whole bunch baked into one big playbook, it's doing discrete things. I can just start snapping them apart and putting them into different places, right? So it makes it really modular and easy. And for my example, I start, first thing it does is it does a backup to the Git repository, remember? And I'm gonna tell it to tag right? So it's going to create that little point in time tag. Then it's going to do all these configuration changes in here. So I'm going to look at my file right here. 
So let's see here. Let me look at the name servers. So right now they are 4.2.2.2 or 8844 and all twos, right? Those are the two different servers. And here I'm looking at my configuration. I've got 8844, that's fine. And I've got all fives, right? So the two are different. So this configuration actually will make a change. So I'm going to tell this workflow, go ahead and close the visualizer. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to run. But first, I'm going to look right here in the variable section, back up with tags true, right? I'm passing that in as an extra variable, which means it's going to take precedence. So it's going to tell it, go ahead and do a backup and tag it. I've got that, um, let me click launch. And here is my config repo, right? So I also specify where the config's coming from. So if I'm doing a uh, change control, like part of that process, I have maybe a different folder uh, with the config files in there that I'm building from. I could have a completely different repo, right? And I get to specify that here. So it'll build from next launch. It's going to go ahead and kick off the job and run out. Now these playbooks, the backup to get, I have it to where it will do either tagged or untagged, right? So I can have it where it just pushes to the backup repo. Like maybe I do that on a nightly basis where it just pushes, right? And the tag portion, perhaps that's when I want to do something special, right? I still have uh, all the visibility. I can see what changed over time, right? I can do the diffs on all the files. So all that functionality is still there um, with just regular ones. But also tag for me feels kind of like a more special occasion. Now, my tags are just uh, the date and time, but that could also be words, right? So you could say this is DNS update and the date and time or, or whatever you want, right? Like you can make it meaningful if you want it to on those tags. For me, I just like, I just like doing the date and time. It kind of keeps things simple. So you could see that it did the network backup, right? Where it's going to clone those files. It's going to actually go through all the devices pull the backup config and then push them in there if it needs to. All right, it's completed the configuration change. So remember in here we had 8844 and all twos. If I check now, it should have adjusted. Now I've got 8844, 5555. If I look in my tag section and I do a quick refresh, I should have a fifth tag. Yes, we sure do. All right, here's our additional tag. Now I'm gonna copy the name of that tag and I'm gonna come in here. We made that change, something went south on us, we need to roll back. I actually have a different job template, CAC, and I've got one named rollback. Again, I'll show you in the visualizer, it looks almost the same, it just doesn't have the network backup portion first, but I'm gonna go ahead and launch that job. And it's asking me what's the repo tag, right? So if I'm doing a rollback, I know it's coming from my backup repository and it's got a tag associated with it. Excuse me. So I'm going to click next. I'm going to click launch and it will use the exact same playbooks that it used before for configuration. Only now it's saying, Hey, instead of cloning from the uh, change control folder over here, right? For those files, instead, clone from the backup folder with that specific point in time tag, right? So it's going to grab those files and pull them back in here and it should roll back all of our changes. That's kind of the beauty part of using the exact same playbooks and the exact same file format for everything, right? I don't have to write tons of different types of playbooks, one for implementation, one for rollback, all that stuff. I'm just one and I'm just feeding it different data due to the configuration. So it completed. So I should be able to take a look. There you go. It successfully rolled back the uh, name server changes that I put in place. All right. So pretty straightforward. It's not too crazy. Like uh, I've seen some implementations out there a little bit more difficult to wrap your head around. And if you were just interested in seeing how it all worked, we have completed that portion. If you are more curious about how this actually kind of goes together, I'm going to show you that now. So you have a decent understanding of we create the job templates, then we add those job templates in to create the workflow, right? So that's not too crazy. I'm going to show you the two different pieces. So it is from two different Git repositories. And I do have a blog post that spells all this out with all the links. So feel free to go there if you need to. <clears throat> but my backup playbook is really simple. All I'm really doing is I'm configuring a bunch of variables, right? And you remember how I said uh, I had backup with tags true in the um, extra vars. Well, here you can see in the playbook, it's set to false. So why is it actually uh, implementing the false? That's because 
um, extra vars have the highest level of precedence. So it's going to override anything in the playbook. So it's going to say, go ahead and tag that stuff. But really, I'm just setting up the variables here for utilization. And then I'm importing a role. So I'm calling a role that I've created uh, that tells it to do the backup. The role's not too crazy. I go to the task section. I look in the main file. So very first thing I do is I set up a timestamp because remember I said I do a timestamp for my tags and all that stuff. You could technically put anything in there that you want, but for me, it's really easy just to have the automation put a little timestamp and I do there. So here's kind of where the magic happens. So inside of an execution environment, I have to tell it how to authenticate to my Git repository, right? And I'm doing this reading and writing over SSH. And so what I did is I put in an SSH private key inside. So the very first thing I do is I make sure that the folder exists for the private key and then I'm copying and pasting the private key contents in there. Well, where does the cert key variable come from? Like this is all my public Git repository, right? Wouldn't that be dangerous to put that information? That is absolutely true, which is why I don't put my private key uh, in here or I store that is inside of the Ansible Automation platform. So if I look at credential types, I've created a custom credential type for SSH certification keys. If I take a look at it, it shows me the fields. I'm basically uh, supplying uh, kind of the ID string for it, right? Uh, the ID, what I want to name it, the type, it's a string. Here's the couple of interesting parts. I set it as secret, which means it's going to obfuscate that in output whenever it can. And then multi-line, that allows me to put in you know, because like certificate formats, you just multiple lines. So it'll let me kind of accurately put all that information in and then it gets passed in as an extra variable there, right? It's this simple. I even have the copy and paste code for this in the uh, blog post. So if you really just want to follow along, you absolutely can. Ultimately, uh, I have that and I associate that credential here and then it gets pushed in as cert key variable then it will clone the repository, the existing backup repository. And then for depending on what type of device it is, right? So mine was a Cisco device. And so if it's an ASA, iOS, and XOS, mine is an XOS because it's a Nexus switch. It's going to call a uh, task file, right? So it's going to just grab an extra task file that in there it will do the, hey, pull the configuration from this specific device and put it into a temporary file, right? But I've also got one for Arista, Juniper, Microtik, right? So it doesn't care what flavor it is. It's going to call the right task file after that. It's going to copy that temporary file back into the repository, and then it's going to do the push. So if it's doing it with tags, it adds one special little command right here. The uh, get tag and then I put the message and attribute in there. Again, I'm just using the time variable. And here, right at the end, you see I do a git push and a git push tags. So I learned that if you do git push tags, it will create that point in time tag, right? That's got all of my configuration changes. But in the main repo, you don't actually see those changes reflected. So you have to do a git push, which will put them, you know, in the repository as you expect to see it, right? I can click on a file and I can see the contents and they have been updated. And then the get push tags additionally will create that point in time tag, right? So do both of those so that you can see them in there. If I'm doing it with no tags, right, where I'm just checking a conditional on that variable, I just do a standard get push, no tags, right? Nothing too crazy. So it's pretty much the exact same command. And I just add tags if they need them. If I don't, I don't. Well, let's take a quick look. Say, for example, at one of the playbooks in here. I'll walk through the NTP one really quickly. So this is one of the individual job templates that I'm running, right? So the previous stuff, that was all the backup portion. This is uh, pulling the NTP configuration. So in here, on these jobs, the very first thing I do is I call the clone repo uh, role. That's what that word is. It was escaping me momentarily. So if I look in that repository, I can see a task file. I've got the main right here. And this is going to look super familiar, right? I'm setting up the exact SSH key, the exact same SSH key information. I'm pushing that in there so that it's able to authenticate to my repository if I need to, right? In this instance, they're public Git repos, so I don't technically need to do that, right? I can just go in and, and grab them and pull them in. But theoretically, Everybody's going to be doing this in private repositories, right? So you're actually going to have to authenticate. So that's already baked in. So you don't have to think about it. 
if it is cloning with a tag, right? So if I've specified that tag information, you know, if the repo tag is not, uh, not empty, and when we do the rollback one, that's exactly what it's doing. It's populating that repo tag variable. If it's not, it's going to, let me find it right here. It's going to do that git clone right there. So git clone depth one branch, and then I specify the tag and then the backup repo, and it's going to go and it's going to grab that exact point in time piece, and it's going to populate that folder. And then the configurations all happen out of that populated information, right? So if it was a rollback, right, with a tag, you can see it's going from the backup repo with a tag. If it's not, if it's going from my regular config one, it's going to prompt me for my config repo, right, like in that survey at the very beginning. And it's just going to clone that folder, right? So it's going to pull that information. And so it's basically taking files from one place or the other, it's taking them into a central spot that the configuration will parse and then go from there. So taking a long back we called the clone repo right so it's either going to grab our backup uh, tagged repository and push those files right here or it's going to grab from my config folder and have them ready to go here i am just setting up what the uh, parse files name is then i'm going to run the ntp global module here for nxos and i've got state parse so i talked earlier about how the resource modules and resource modules in networking for Ansible are going to be um, like configuring discrete things, right? Like so VLANs, ACLs, NTP in this example, right? They do very specific thing and they've added uh, pretty much to all of them the state of parsed. So I can give it CLI information and it will parse it and put it into a data model in memory, which means I don't have to like create this data model that stuff. I can save it the way I want. <clears throat> if I did want to create a data model, I could use this to parse create all that for me the first time and then I could fill it out uh, subsequent times. But I love storing things in configuration, uh, like standard configuration format, so I can pull that in. And I parse it in memory, and then the very next command is I use the exact same module, and I take that parsed info, and I push it in as replace. So I'm saying, whatever you had as the configuration, use this now, right? So I'm doing configuration as code. I'm saying, this is the state I want it to exist in. Pull it in, parse it and make the device appear in that state. These are item potent, which also means if I compare the two and it is in that desired state, it does nothing. I love that. Love that about Ansible. Now, if I say this is the state I want to be in and it's not, it will make it so and it'll say changed for me, right? Very simple. So these playbooks aren't that complicated, that crazy. They're pretty short, uh, pretty standard. I do have some different ones in there that show it doing it in various different ways. That is the conclusion of this demonstration. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to, uh, to hear them. I would love to hear how you would extend this, how you change this, how does this fit in your environment? Uh, would you do something differently? Whatever it happens to be. So thank you for watching. Happy automating. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.